We're a little uneven, so I want to roll back. But what I would do is basically get your bolts halfway snugged up so that we're not sliding. You, know, you want to get it kind of rough, rough in there. And you can see that this one's going to be harder to do because we only have half the knife here. Um, but you're going to want to get in there and actually set. See, the, the crucial thing on this is side to side. Because as you can see here, we're almost touching. And then there, it was way back. So we want to set that to where we have an even gap between side to side. You can bolt them in quick, but like I said, it's going to take a lot more sharpening strokes to get it square than if you just took a little bit more time and, uh, and got it square to begin with. So, with that, every time, same as that one, doesn't matter which machine it is, you replace knives, you replace bolts. One of the other things to look at too um, would be these threaded nut bars. That's what's on the bottom side that your bolts thread into. Most of the time they're okay, but just take a quick look at them. Um, when I take one apart, I clean up, I mean, everything. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to have a bunch of crud on here and bolt that back up in there, then you're gonna be, you know, planting on that dirt or whatever. So the, the cleaner, the better, to get better torque, better clamp down. Um, I would also recommend when you go to torque the bolts, this is what I do, is I mark every bolt head with the paint pen as you're going through. Um, on this one, you start on the inside and work your way out, so you go one, two, three, four, whatever your pattern wants to be, you know. But I just do a daub on every bolt that I torque just so that there's no question when you come back through, you get all the way back around, you're like, well, did I do it or did I not? It's just quick and easy. Those ones go to, I marked it on there, 232. It's very critical that those get torqued with a torque wrench in a proper sequence and not a, I think I know what my rattle gun does. Yeah. You know, if that lets go, it's 30 grand. So, pretty crucial. Um, there's new bolts that come with the shear bar too. You're gonna use new bolts on that as well. Um, shear bar goes to 143. Same thing, good torque wrench, not, you know, you want to actually know what they're at, not kind of, you know. Um, so the, the half knife is 232? Or the, the full knife? Or both? Or both. The bolts are the same. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's like 315 newton meters, plus or minus 15 or whatever it is, but that comes out to 232 without doing the plus or minus, but so that comes right in the middle there. Um, all of our torques, when you look them up, are in newton meters. Um, there is a conversion chart in most of the, the operator's manuals. Who's ever got a smartphone? Um, I got a convert pad app that I use all the time for all this stuff because it comes out, you know, 425 newton meters. Instead of, you know, looking it up, I can just type it in there. And it tells me, you know, what the conversion is. Right a lot there. of times your torque wrench will have newton meters on a lot it of as times well. I have it on there as well, but. Todd, tell us about long bar, short bar. I know it's been a little while ago, it's but it still might exist in some um, older machines. I've never actually seen one. Did you, have you ever yep. seen one? Mm -hmm. Okay. On these nut bars, a long time ago, there was actually one side that actually had more, more meat coming out one side. They weren't evenly spaced on the ends. So the other one was maybe like another quarter inch longer. So you could actually get them in backwards. So if you happen to come up with an older machine, something to be aware of when you're taking them out is just to be to look at this. Because if you bolt it in backwards, there actually comes up to this weld in there. It'll still bolt in, but it will not be bolted in flat to the bottom. It'll actually be this little edge that's a little bit longer will be sitting up on that weld. So you actually won't be physically <clears throat> clamping it in there 100% flat. It's been a long time. Most of them are out, I mean, unless there was a machine that had them in it that uh, They've never been changed from 
long time ago. Long time ago, quite a few years ago. But that's just something to be aware of. I mean, there shouldn't be any of them that really floating out there anymore, but there could be. So, good point. Yeah, just be aware when you bolt those in that yeah, if that thing's not coming up square or it's not torquing up right, then maybe have a look. So, but torque is very important. Proper torque instead of just those retaining things for the knives now. How often do you replace those? That's a good question. Um, I don't really know. I, mean, I think as long as they're good and they're not cracked or beat up or anything, we've been using them. I haven't really had any failures per se. Um, but that's a that's a good question. Make sure they're not cracked around the bolt holes between anything leading out there, because that's what clamps that knife down. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> I mean, obviously replaceable. There is a top side to them. There is a little bit. You really can't see it much when you look down. There is just a little bit of a bevel there. So it does say top on them, so they are reversible. You can get them on the upside down. So you do want them to have, because they are basically kind of like a spring washer to sorts. I guess if you if you took them off and you can't see, and like I said, it's very subtle, you can pass it around and take a look at it. Um, if they are flattened out, then it might be a good idea to replace them just, just because. So. Good question. We need to come up with an answer, Lee, to see if, if there's a recommended change yeah, hour yeah. or every so many knife changes or I something like that. Do you remember if that was an expensive part or not? Or Yeah. Probably fairly cheap insurance, but we need to find out how often. How often, every five times or ten times, or, or we don't worry about it. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Um, when changing the knives, what are some of the other things that we have to re uh, readjust? Let's say we put new knives, new shear bar in this thing. What's up, what else do we have to do? Stone. Readjust the stone. Okay. Um, another one is the drum bottom. It's got shims on there. If you've shimmed it up as it's worn out, you got to put the shims back in to drop the drum bottom back out. Um, Making sure that the knife life is reset back to 100%. I believe it when you back the shear bar out, it does reset to 100%, but making sure that it is back to 100%. Um, otherwise, your, your counter is going to be all out of whack. With that being said, we'll, uh, we'll readjust the stone. Who hasn't done it? This is real important for somebody that hasn't done it or I've hasn't. i got a new one to put in. So. Okay. Do it, yeah. yeah hop. Mine's gonna be stuck in there, like you were saying. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hop in there and and uh, take a look at this. This is important. There are a lot of questions on this. We'll pull this one back out. We'll get this one out, and then we'll take a look at everything over there on the bench. This is the lock nut tool. It might look a little bit different from the ones that you have. Uh, the ones you have might be flat, but this is the new style. It uh, works with the 494 machine because the stone is a little bit longer, so it actually sticks up through the holder, so they had to make a cut for it. Um, it still does the same thing, it's the same tool. So it locks in on there. Can you get the longer stone on these? You can, and we'll get to that. Um, first thing, there's a little lock tab in here. You guys uh, haven't seen this, jump up in there and have a look. Show them what you're talking about, because that's real important. How far down does the stone have to be inside of it before you know it's coming in place? It will tell you. Okay. Um, if you have your counter reset in the cab, at 450 cycles, it's going to tell you to reset the stone. Or replace it if you if you haven't you know, already done it. Let me uh, this thing Somebody want to plug that into that fender right there? You'll be able to flip up that little cap. Oh, the little cap. Yep. Great. Okay, this little bracket goes on the end here, and that's part of the ratchet assembly. 
That's what keeps the stone from from backing up. Um, so you have to take that off in order to remove it. There's a little lock pin on here on the side. That's what's going to lock the holder in place so you can break the nut loose. See this right here? So you move that in. And you, you have to find that position. That's not going to be yeah. right there. You have to rotate that holder assembly and to find that hole. back it back out because it's going to be screwed down in there. As you back it back out, eventually this pin, you can see it on that holder right there, is going to drop into that hole. And that pin will lock that whole housing together so you can break the nut loose. Otherwise, it'll just keep spinning all the way out of its floor. And there's some grease search down there, Todd. Do we grease those? On, on the stone itself, very minimal, if anything, I think. It was collecting too much dirt, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. This is the one that was in there last night, and that one was stuck in there. This, how did you how did you get it out? We just got a pry bar underneath it and started kind of working it. Once you kind of got the, that dirt and dust and stuff kind of broke loose, it just kind of slid up out. It wasn't like it was super jammed in there. It was just just stuck. Um, can anybody tell me what's wrong with that? Is that is that how you took it out? That's exactly how okay. we took it out. The rubber's in the wrong spot. There is a sequence. Every new stone comes with the new rubbers on it, but it doesn't come with the spacers. Spacers are obviously reusable. Um, and there is a beveled edge on that spacer. And that is to go towards the rubber. It looks, it's very, very faint, but there is a little bit of a beveled edge there, right? So, you can see in the picture here, and this is the same picture that's in your op manual, that there's two rubbers on the bottom, then the bevel goes towards it, and then another rubber. Those go on either way. The rubbers can go on either way. And then the bevel towards it. And the bevel towards it. And then that slides down in there. As you compress the nut, that's what's holding the stone in place. It's just basically pushing those rubbers into that little bit of a bevel and it just holds it in there tight. So you can see it out here a little bit better. You can see that sticks up through there as you thread that nut on there. That holds it in place. Now, two different stones, 494 is longer, 492 is shorter. This one will fit in there, but you have to buy a longer tool in order to be able to tighten the nut. With this one, you get roughly 900 passes, you get 450 to readjust it. This one, you just get an extra 450. I don't think the numbers really pencil out to be a whole lot more. I mean, because you spend more because it's obviously longer, but it doesn't really pencil out, I don't think, per se, to, unless you already have the longer tool to get it by, you have to have expense of the tool and stuff in there to get it. Um, but yeah, they are the same, just one's longer than the other. The stone's not going to be completely gone when you have to change no, it. It's, it's, there's the still some too, stone I there. I had one that was there. You're still going to have a lot of stone left even though it says it's time to change okay. it. But you have to have that much in there to hold it. That's the way it's designed. You can't really cheat it to get a whole lot more. Um, glue them together? Yeah. We had somebody try that. It doesn't work. I did it on the old choppers. You did, huh? Yeah. Like New Holland or something yeah. like that, yeah. 
Very similar to a New Holland setup. Yeah. On the pull types. You get chunks flaking off of there. You want to make sure. How do you know how far to set this? Is you want a knife at the upper position because it will drop all the way down through it. Then just set on the nut. Yeah. You lock that in. And that should sit on there. So that's going to slide down in there. And if you get on this side, you can kind of, you know, do the, this part here go down yeah. further. Okay. So that would. So that's going to slide in that. And that sits yep. up top, okay. So like when you go to readjust it too, you know, it'll be, let's say there, um, and you're just gonna push it down in farther. So to readjust it, you just loosen that? Loosen you're gonna that take this closer. loosen, you're gonna back out first, because your pin's gonna be in the out position. This is gonna be unlocked. You're gonna take your lock tab off, okay. and you're gonna put your tool on there, and you're gonna back it out. You're gonna have this pin trying to push in there, and as soon as this whole housing backs out, the pin's gonna lock in. Okay. When the pin locks in, then this whole brass piece is held to where, to where it turned so you can break the nut loose. Okay. You break the nut loose, then you can take it off and pull it all back out. Um, one thing that you got to do first, though, is the sharpening door. On some of the models, it doesn't open, but the sharpening door should be, you can, even if it's not open, you can push it open. Okay. Um, and then you can actually physically, because this is going to be all the way back over here, you're going to push the the whole holder over the cutting cylinder. Okay. So you some push easier than others. What's that? Some push a little some easier than others. Easier you got a little others. force to get that over. Yeah. So you're gonna push the door open. The door's just on this little hydraulic cylinder. Same thing, you can push it open if it's not already open. I think on the newer 492 machines, it opens automatically. When you shut the, engine, shut the off. engine off. This one was closed, we had to push it open, but it just pushes open okay. itself. Um, you're gonna run it over to, like I said, to the knife, and then you're gonna put your ring back on. As you're putting the ring back on, you're tightening it down. It's actually gonna force the stone down into the knife, so you can cheat it up a little bit. Okay. Um, to get your clearance, because you want it really close to where it'll start grinding right away without having to do a bunch. Because it takes us one click isn't very much in the thing. Um, so you can actually cheat it up a little bit. And then tighten. And while Todd's doing that, really quick, if you guys look in your book, it's not gonna tell you to go over top of a knife. It's gonna have a, a, it's gonna sound really complicated and it's say X amount of millimeters from this point on the outside it frame. Give you a dimension and, of and it's something. It's a real pain to do it. This is the easy way. Push it over a knife because that's what it's actually gonna do. That's what it's gonna touch. That makes sense. Yeah. And you run that down, you're gonna torque that to 125. Um, once it's torqued and in place, you can make sure you got to release the lock. Take that screw back. Take that pin back out and turn it. Because the first time it goes over and starts actually trying to ratchet it, it's held in place and it's going to break the little pin. Okay. Um, if you get it all torqued down and you're still too close, you can actually fudge the whole the whole holder now. Oh, once you pull that pin. Once you pull that pin, you okay. got you and you can budget to actually set it close to, set it to, her, to the knife. Just by turning? Just by turning it. Okay. Then you're going to reinstall your lock tab <coughs> and lock that in place. And that'll keep it from, from back.
couple things to look at too when you're doing it. You can feel on this one. If you get up in here, that the brass is actually kind of worn a little bit in the bore, you know, because it is a brass holder. It can sit in there and start, you know, wearing out. Um, the whole thing too on the slide is starting to get a little wore out. Um, just some things to, to be aware of. The stone slides back and forth using the cylinder in this chain. It's a little stainless chain, runs on plastic sprockets. Um, so one thing to check there, they will wear out. A lot of times, even if they still got teeth, the inner hub will actually be kind of oblong. Um, something to check there. If you run your chain too tight. If you run your chain tight, it'll just destroy the sprockets. I mean, you just don't want it in there flapping, but you don't want it in there pulled super tight because it is just a little plastic sprocket. Um, as that stone comes across, there's a little mechanism on the inside there that actually, when the stone gets to the far end, it actually turns, turns it. That's what ratchets it. Um, you can see it right in here. Spring loaded. So if you get a bunch of material built up on this end, the stone will still come across and turn. hit it, but it won't turn it. Okay. So it's just something to, to be aware of. That's very important because it won't tell you that it's not advancing. It'll still say, hey, I'm sharpening, I'm doing it, doing its job. Every time it goes past the counter, it, it, it counts it as a sharpening cycle, and you'll still actually touch. And it only turns it on one side? It only turns it on one side, so it comes across, advances it, and then it grinds back, and then it comes across, advances it, and then it grinds back, basically. It's still gonna grind coming across, and even if it's not advancing for quite a while, it'll still be touching and grinding. It just won't be grinding hard. You'll think it's grinding, but it's not advancing. You want to actually come out of the cab and, and kind of, you know, stand back and, and listen to it. You'll know you'll one hear, that's When it gets this advancing. thing, you actually hear it go click, 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 and actually, you know, be a positive. That's a spot to look at real often and blow that out of there. So, any questions? No? All right. I think uh, it's probably time to change. Ooh, the whistle. <laughs>